So welcome you to uh, our very first talk on Swift in the 47 Degrees Academy. Make sure you check out uh, our website because we are running a lot of weekly content on functional programming, not only in Swift, but also in Kotlin, Scala, and Haskell, and many other interesting topics. We will be posting all the events there, so make sure you enroll in them, not to miss them. Move that button three pixels to the right and align that text to the center. Those colors, are you sure they have the right contrast in dark mode? The animation should be smooth. Why don't we add a modal screen here? The landscape mode messes everything up. Oh, and don't forget to make that layout responsive. I bet you have heard more than one of these sentences in your daily work as an iOS developer. Developing nice graphical user interfaces is as rewarding as it is challenging. Don't you miss the days when all we had was just text? A terminal, a prompt, and a few commands are usually more than enough to solve users' problems. Let's go back to basics and explore a lesser known facet of Swift, how it can help us write text-based user interfaces on command line applications. And now, without much further ado, we are going to start with uh, today's talk on command line utilities with Swift using the Swift argument parser library. Swift is uh, mainly used for building uh, applications in the Apple ecosystem, but we can see that uh, we can use it uh, for a lesser known aspect as uh, building handy command line tools. And this is what we are going to be learning today. So all this started with a conversation between me and my friend Pepe during lunch one day. Pepe is an old school developer who likes fancy mechanical keyboards and hates graphical user interfaces. So one day he, he told me that he wanted to build a GitHub uh, tool to, to be able to search uh, repositories. So at that moment I started thinking oh, nice, um, let's try to build a, a nice uh, graphical uh, app with a lot of animations and let's think about uh, how the user experience is going to be. And suddenly he interrupted my train of thought by saying, I want to search from my terminal. I must say that I was a little bit disappointed at that moment, but I took that as an opportunity to build a command line tool using Swift. Uh, he was not very happy about this because he he thought that Swift is not for that. He preferred doing it in Bash. And I don't know about you, but uh, last time I tried to write a script in Bash, well, I, had, I still have nightmares. So I had to convince him to use Swift to do this uh, kind of task. So why is Swift a good uh, choice to write command line tools? Well, most of us present here today are already familiar uh, with uh, Swift because we are most uh, developers in the Apple ecosystem. This does not seem to be a strong reason for him as he doesn't know any Swift, but uh, I have to use uh, stronger reasons. So I said, well, unlike other languages that are typically used for scripting, Swift is uh, strongly typed. This means that uh, we will have a uh, safer and more uh, robust code because we can lean on the compiler to uh, uh, verify uh, properties about our code uh, for us in during compile time. And also we can use the Swift package manager to leverage uh, our favorite uh, libraries to build uh, command line tools and make our life easier. In fact, we can easily create uh, a new project using the, uh, the Swift toolkit. We can invoke Swift package in it. And this time we are building an executable file. So we can pass the argument dash dash type executable. And then we give a name to our project. In this case, GitHub tool. This will create a set of files with a project structure that is all we need to get started. Among these files, we can find the package.swift file, 
which is a manifest that describes the structure of the project that we are building. Uh, this is a file written in Swift and uh, its structure is as follows. First of all, we have um, a line describing the version of the Swift tools that we are going to be using. In this case, it's 5.2. Then um, we import the package description module that contains all the data types that we need uh, in order to uh, describe our package. We give it a name and we state the products that we are going to include in this package. In this case, we are only including an executable named uh, GitHub. Then we can provide an array of all the dependencies that we will uh, use. And finally, uh, we describe an array of all the targets that uh, we have within our package. Uh, by default, we will have uh, two targets, one that will contain our production code and another one that will contain our test code. But we can add as many targets as we want in order to modularize our application. So if we want to get started building a command line tool, one of the first questions that we may have is, well, how do we parse arguments from the command line invocation? Imagine that we have a terminal prompt and the user is going to be typing uh, the command with a set of arguments. And then we have our Swift uh, code. So we have to go over each of the parameters of our invocation and figure out their meaning, their values and their types and make them into our Swift code. We could be doing this by hand, but uh, fortunately, uh, Apple has released recently a library called Swift Argument Parser that we can include in our package.swift uh, manifest and just to start using it in our project. This uh, goes into the dependency section that we have seen before. Uh, and all we have to do is include its uh, URL from uh, the GitHub repository and the version that we want to use that at the moment of uh, this talk is the 0.1. Then the library uh, lets us go from an invocation like repeat academy dash dash count 47 dash dash include counter into Swift code where each of these uh, arguments that were passed into the command line are correctly parsed and stored in uh, these variables with their corresponding type. When I showed this code from the um, uh, documentation of the library to my friend Pepe, he jumped out of uh, his chair and he said, wait, I thought you said we are going to use uh, Swift. So what are all those annotations? Is this Java or Kotlin? So I had to say, no, this uh, is indeed Swift. And this, it is a, a new feature that was introduced uh, approximately one year ago called property wrappers. So a property wrapper it's a language construction that lets us wrap a value like this blue square, and it has two observers, get and set. And then uh, we can perform actions uh, whenever the value is retrieved or whenever we want to update the, the wrapped value. How does this look in code? Well, uh, let's imagine that we want to build a property wrapper to trim the leading and trailing characters of a string. So we create a structure called trimmed and we annotate it with add property wrapper uh, to indicate the compiler that uh, this is going to be used as a property wrapper. Then every property wrapper must have a wrapped value. This wrapped value in our case has type of, of a string and this is where we can uh, add actions whenever we are getting or setting it. In this particular case, when uh, we are setting a new value, we uh, set uh, the new value, but before uh, we trim the characters in the character set that was chosen. Property wrappers can receive additional parameters during initialization but the only uh, restriction is that uh, the wrap value must be the first argument that we pass to the init. Then if we want to use them, 
as we can uh, as we have seen before we just have to add the add trimmed uh, property wrapper before the field declaration and it will use the value that we are assigning on the right as the initial wrap value if we want to overwrite the default character set we just pass it as a regular uh, argument when we initialize any other object how does all this magic work well, behind the scenes, the compiler is creating these uh, two properties that uh, are referring to the exact property wrappers that we have created uh, with the same name, but prefixed with an underscore. And then we have uh, computed variables uh, for each property that uh, acts as a proxy to access the wrap value uh, whenever we get it or set it. Pepe does not seem to be very happy about property wrappers. Well, property wrappers have a lot of advantages. In, in uh, this case, if we compare the two versions that we have seen, um, they add a lot of syntax sugar that eliminates a lot of boilerplate code, and this leads to very clean and concise code. But uh, they also have some bit disadvantages. In particular, property wrappers do not compose well. This means that if we want to apply the same uh, or two property wrappers to the same uh, field, uh, we will have a hard time if not being even uh, impossible in some cases. Also, we have to be very, very careful about uh, side effects and state mutations that may go unnoticed and will give us a lot of headaches uh, when we try to reason about the behavior of uh, our code. I would like to know what you think about uh, property wrappers, if you agree with these advantages or disadvantages, and what you are building with, uh, with them. So remember that you can join the discussion in the Swift channel in the 47 Degrees Academy Slack. Okay, so now that we know how we are going to be parsing our arguments, our second concern is how are we going to interact with the GitHub API? Well. Um, GitHub offers an HTTP-based API, so we can build an, a network client uh, ourselves by hand. But alternatively, we can use Bow Open API. Bow Open API is a tool that we have developed at 47 degrees, and it lets us go from a, a Swagger or a Open API specification file into a functional network client. This is a little bit out of the scope of this talk, but fortunately we are running a mini workshop on building a functional network client with Bow Open API uh, in a few weeks in 47 Degrees Academy. So make sure you, if you are interested, make sure you go to the website and enroll because there are limited uh, spots. Well, we have uh, already figured out all the dependencies that we are going to use. So let's get started with our first command using Swift argument parser. This is really simple. And all we have to do is create a structure that uh, describes our command and implements the parsable command uh, protocol. Then whatever business logic we want to add, we just add it into the run uh, function. Finally, in order to invoke this command, we have to go to our main.swift file and call search command.main and it will parse uh, everything and invoke the run function that we have created. We can run this uh, from Xcode or we can go to our uh, command line and type swift run GitHub and it will print the message that we have uh, included in our run function. However, this is not very useful because right now we are not passing any input from the outside and the command all it can do is print the same message over and over. So how do we do something useful like providing a query that uh, we can search on GitHub? Swift argument parser provides a uh, property wrapper called argument and we can just apply it to uh, a field uh, to indicate that the whatever is passed in the invocation must be assigned 
to this uh, field, in this case query, with type string. Then we can refer to query in our run method uh, as uh, we do with any regular uh, variable. So if we run now Swift run GitHub bow, it will print searching bow. Nice, we had we had this to Pepe and well, he says this does not work. He tried to search for bow arch and this is in fact two two terms and he got unexpected argument arch. Well, let's see what happened. Well. This is because of the way uh, Swift argument parser is uh, parsing arguments. It is uh, detecting spaces to think that this is uh, part of the next uh, argument or the next uh, input that we are going to be processing. In fact, it is as easy as surrounding our search query uh, between quotation marks, and this will work. But uh, if still we want to type things without the quotation marks, there is a way to, to do that. We are not limited to strings. We can say that our query is an array of strings. That way, whenever we type several uh, terms in our query, each one of them will be assigned to one position within this array. And then in the run method, we just use the array as we would normally use. So right now, if we try to invoke it without the quote marks, it will print a uh, searching bow watch. Good, now we have fixed our first uh, problem. And now when Pepe starts using the tool, he says, well, I, I am a little bit overwhelmed by the number of uh, search results that I am getting. So I still want to get all search results, but sometimes I would like to filter my search by programming language, something like passing this dash dash language Swift to get only repositories with uh, uh, using the Swift uh, language. So how can we do that? Swift argument parser provides another property wrapper called option. And options are very similar to uh, uh, named arguments in Swift functions. This means that we can pass a, a value as an input, but we have to prefix it with this dash dash uh, something uh, in order to tell Swift argument parser this is the value that we want to assign to this option. Notice also that in this case, we are using a string optional. This means that we can omit this option from the command line uh, invocation. It's not mandatory to include it. However, this modeling has uh, some problems. As we are using a plain string, this means that users can type whatever they want. They can even introduce non-existing languages or they can use different uh, capitalizations for the languages that we support. And probably those are not uh, supported by the GitHub API. So we have to somehow control that. So how do we, do, how, how do we deal with uh, this situation? Well, we can restrict the possible values that these options can take by creating a custom type. To do that, we can create an enumeration uh, with uh, a language and um, make it conform the expressible by argument protocol. This is necessary to tell a Swift argument parser how to parse our custom type from the command line. Um, they are already providing this implementation for the primitive types and uh, arrays, optionals, and all these things. But if we want to add our own custom type, we need to uh, tell the library how to do it. Then we can add a few cases with the languages that we support. And we add an initializer that uh, creates a value of our language from a string. We can pattern match over this uh, string to select which uh, capitalizations we are supporting or which abbreviations of the languages we are supporting. And if we find something that uh, we don't uh, understand or we don't know how to parse, we just return nil. 
with this, now we can uh, continue using the, the tool as we did before, or we can add the dash dash language Swift. And if we provide some input that is not uh, allowed, it will fail. Pepe is a little bit lazy and he doesn't want to be typing dash dash language every time because he feels this is too long. He doesn't want to type so much. So can we make that shorter? Well, uh, by default, Swift argument parser takes the name of the variable that we have uh, created in our Swift code as the name of the option that we are um, using in the invocation. We could be changing the, the name of the, this variable in order to make it shorter in the command line, but we want to still maintain uh, expressive uh, names for our variables. So fortunately, Swift argument parser provides options to customize the, uh, the appearance or the wording that we use in the command line invocation. This is done thanks to an optional parameter that we can pass to the option property wrapper called name. Name takes uh, an array of uh, name descriptions. So in this case, we are saying that we accept a short uh, name, naming description for this option and a custom uh, long version using lang. So now we can invoke this command without the P option or using dash L or dash dash lang. Nice, this makes it uh, a little bit shorter. I hope Pepe is happy about this. Good. So now he wants to customize the level of detail of the output. Sometimes he wants to get just a summary of uh, what uh, the search uh, results look like. And then some other times he wants further details about uh, the repositories that were uh, returned as, uh, as, a re as a result of his search. How can we do that? Well, we could be creating an option with a Boolean type and then pass true or false at the end. But this is the same as using the flag property wrapper with a, a Boolean type. Basically, when we add, uh, when we omit the, the flag, we print the non-verbose version. And when, when we add it, uh, it triggers the, the flag, it activates it, makes it true, and we print the detailed version of the search results. In this case, we are printing some statistics about uh, the repositories that were uh, returned. Good. Sometimes we want to be explicit uh, about the negative case. So we can customize how the name of the flag uh, is uh, used uh, when we want to uh, explicitly disable it. This is done through the inversion uh, parameter of the flag property wrapper, and it can take several values. In this case, we have chosen prefix no. So that means that when we omit it, we are implicitly uh, disabling this uh, flag, making it to false. When we add dash dash verbose, we uh, set it to true. And when we add dash dash no verbose, we are explicitly making it to false. So it behaves exactly as omitting it, but making it explicit. We have covered a lot uh, so far. We have seen how to parse arguments, options, and flags. And I bet you have already a lot of questions. So make sure you post them now, because we will be running a question and answer session uh, right after this talk. Good, so right now we can uh, either provide a summary version of the search results or a full-fledged uh, report on all the repositories that are re uh, returned uh, in the search uh, results. But Pepe wants finer control. He wants to choose what is shown in this uh, report. Choosing from stars, forks, issues, and watchers. We could be doing this by adding four Boolean flags, just like we did with the verbose mode. Uh, but there is a more elegant way of doing this. 
In fact, we can create a custom set of flags using uh, an enumeration that describes uh, each case uh, for each flag that we want to support, and then implementing the enumerable flag protocol. Then in our command, we can still use the flag property wrapper. And here uh, we say that we are accepting an array of uh, repository flags. So this means that we can pass no, no flag in order to get the uh, summary version or any combination of the uh, four cases that we created in our custom flag. So one example, if we run it with uh, dash dash stars, it will only include the stars in the, in the results, or we can add dash dash issues and dash dash forks in order to include these two features in the, in the results. Good, Pepe seems to be uh, Starting seems to start to be convinced about the power of uh, Swift to build command line tools, and I hope you are also starting to feel convinced about it. So he is uh, he wants to add another feature to this tool. This time he wants to view the branches of a given repository and decide if he wants to enable pretty printing or not. He gives us a warning. Uh, we have to remember that in order to identify a GitHub repository, we need uh, the owner and the name of the repo. So something like bow-swift slash bow. This uh, is harder to capture in a type. So we are going to try something else. We can implement uh, another command, in this case, branches command, where, where we take an argument the repository as a string and a flag to enable and disable pretty printing. And then a Swift argument parser lets us include a validate function. This validate function is executed before the run function that we have seen before. And run is only called if the, validate, if the validation succeeds. So in this validate function, we can uh, add any preconditions that our uh, inputs must uh, fulfill. In this case, I'm doing a very simple validation. I'm checking if the repository that was uh, provided in, uh, in the invocation contains a slash. If not, I am throwing a validation error with a string that contains the, re the reason why we failed. This uh, validation is uh, very, very simple. And if you are interested in knowing more about uh, validation and error handling, we have an entire lesson in the upcoming course on uh, functional programming in Swift with Bow. So if you are interested, also go to the website, 47degrees.com slash academy and enroll in the, in the course. Good, so, oh, it seems that Pepe, Pepe um, forgot to mention that he also wanted to uh, check tax of a particular repository and maintain also the ability to have the pretty printing option. That means that uh, right now we, we have a branches command and we may have a tax command and both have the exact same sets uh, of uh, arguments and flags. Well, it would be uh, beneficial if we could extract this duplication uh, to a common structure uh, that we can reuse across these two commands and many others that uh, may in the future share the same uh, amount of inputs. Fortunately, the Apple engineers have already thought about this and they included uh, a way of, of doing that. So we can create our structure repository arguments that in this case, instead of uh, implementing parsable command, it implements parsable arguments. Then we include our uh, inputs being arguments, options, or flags, whatever we want, just as we do when we are dealing with a command. And it also uh, lets us bundle some uh, validation logic that we can reuse across all commands. 
Then if we go to our commands, we can use the option group property wrapper in order to uh, include the extracted parameters. This is uh, not bad at all, but we now have three commands. So how can we invoke each one from the same tool? Well, we have created three parcel commands, search commands, uh, branches command, and tax command. And we don't want to lead to proliferation of different commands. We want to have a single tool where we can invoke each one of these uh, features. Fortunately, the Swift argument parser supports the notion of subcommands. But first, we need a way of uh, referring to these uh, subcommands. One way of doing this is uh, creating a configuration that we can add as a static variable for each command. This command configuration contains metadata about the commands that we are uh, describing. And one of the parameters that we can provide is the command name. So we can use search, branches, or tags, uh, res respectively for the three commands that we just built. Then we need to group them into some sort of uh, parent uh, command. We create a main command that is also a parsable command. And in its command configuration, we provide the command name, GitHub. And then we can add an array of all the subcommands that are bundled together in this main command. The library even supports uh, having several nested levels of uh, subcommands. Then if we try to run this, uh, we can use GitHub search, GitHub branches, or GitHub tags, followed by the parameters, the inputs that each one of them is able to receive. Well, it seems like in a very short time, our tool has grown a lot. And this uh, can lead to some users being a little bit lost on discovering the features that we uh, uh, that they can use. So can we provide some guidance to our users? Swift Argument Parser lets us provide help at different levels. And providing help is one of the aspects of this library that has been more carefully taken care of. We can provide, for instance, the description of, uh, of the purpose of a command or a subcommand. We can provide the description of uh, what an argument or an option does, or we can even provide a description of the values that a custom flag can take. Can we, how, can we, how can we do that? Well, this is done through the metadata that we can include in the command configuration. We can add a short description in the abstract uh, parameter, or we can add a much longer uh, description of uh, the, the behavior of our command in the discussion parameter. So if we run our command without uh, any other uh, instruction on which uh, subcommand we want to, to choose, all this information that we have included in the metadata will be prompted in a, a nicely formatted uh, help menu. Then in order to describe uh, the purpose of an argument, an option, or a flag, we can use uh, the argument help. This is uh, uh, provided through an optional parameter that the three property wrappers have. And in the argument help, we can pass a string that describes the, the uh, purpose of uh, the input, and we can also customize uh, additional uh, things like the value name that will be printed in the help menu. Finally, if we want to describe the possible values that uh, our custom flag can take, uh, we do it through providing an static function help that will receive each of the possible values that we uh, our custom flag can take, and we return an argument help with a string that describes its, uh, its meaning. Then if we use the dash dash help anywhere, it will print this uh, beautifully formatted uh, help, help uh, menu where we have uh, everything that we have included. 
This is the value name that we provided. And these are the descriptions that we added to our um, argument help. Nice. Well, we are almost done. And Pepe really wants to stretch the possibilities of uh, Swift argument parser. So can we replace the dash h or dash dash help uh, options to provide help? Well, we can, but that doesn't mean we should. Remember that uh, using dash h or dash dash help is kind of a standard. So probably our, your users will already know that they can uh, invoke your command with these options in order to know how to use it. And if you replace it, well, they may get lost. Sometimes it is necessary, for instance, if uh, you have an option or a flag that starts with an H and you want to provide the short options, so it will collide with the dash H to provide help. We can override these uh, help option names uh, also in the command configuration. It has an optional parameter called help names that uh, can take an array of uh, name descriptions. So in this case, we can provide a custom short version to ask for help that will allow us to use dash question mark in order to display the help menu. Good, we are finally done with our tool and now we want to release it. So how can we do that? Well, we can use the Swift package manager in order to build an executable file. We just have to run Swift build dash C release and it will create uh, um, a binary file under the hidden folder build uh, slash release that we can copy to USR local bin, for instance, in order to have it available all uh, across our computer. This is a little bit uh, better if we want to regularly use this command without having to type uh, Swift build, uh, oh, sorry, Swift run, GitHub search, and whatever arguments we have, uh, we want to provide. So, in order to finish this talk, um, we can say that Swift is a very powerful language, and not only to build uh, applications in the Apple ecosystem. Some of the new features, like property wrappers, enable the creation of very, very expressive libraries and DSLs. But we have to be very careful about the uh, disadvantages that they have. And of course, we have covered just a small part uh, of what Swift argument parser can provide, and even a, a very small uh, piece of uh, what we can achieve with uh, our command line tools. So I encourage you to go and take a look at the documentation, which is uh, quite extensive, and learn uh, more about uh, what uh, this library offers. Thank you very much for attending this uh, talk at 47 Degrees Academy. And then I will jump to see if you have posted any questions and I will try to answer them. So the first uh, question is, uh, well, this question comes from Zoom. And um, does it matter if I change the order of the arguments in the command line invocation? Uh, no, uh, you can use whatever order you want. Um, there, are, there is a, an order uh, based on how you declare uh, your inputs in your Swift file, but uh, the user can invoke it in any other way. So uh, the help will be uh, providing the, the options in the, in the order that you have uh, described, but you can swap uh, the order of options, uh, arguments, and flags without any uh, additional trouble. Okay, another question. What happens if I provide the same option or flag multiple times? Well, um, I would, I would say that I consider this an error because of the ambiguity that uh, may be introduced, but it is actually not an error. 
uh, if you provide the same option and flag multiple times, um, the uh, value that you will get is the last uh, option or the last flag that was uh, typed in the terminal. Okay. Sometimes even uh, if you uh, create a flag and instead of using a Boolean, you use an int, uh, you will receive the number of times that this flag was typed in the, in the invocation. So there are some use cases uh, for that. Third question. Can Swift build make binaries compatible with uh, the whole platforms? I guess uh, compatible with uh, Mac OS and Linux. I guess uh, this is what you are asking for. And yes, uh, fortunately, you can create uh, cross-platform uh, tools. You have to be very careful because some of the libraries that you may use may not be supported in Linux, but uh, yeah, you can create uh, tools that uh, work both on macOS and Linux. And it seems we have a final question. Does the help messages for the arguments need to be static strings or it can be taken dynamically? Good question. This is something that I haven't uh, uh, considered or tried. I think they need to be uh, static strings, but uh, I would like to know if uh, someone has tried uh, doing that. So maybe we can take this discussion in the Slack channel uh, in the 47 Degrees uh, Academy. Okay, it seems we don't have any additional questions. So I would like to invite you to the next uh, events that we are running on 47 Degrees Academy uh, next week. First, we are going to have uh, a talk by my colleague Valentin uh, about uh, functional error handling and validation using CATS in Scala. So even though this is uh, using Scala, whatever you learn in this talk is equally applicable if you use Swift using both. So I encourage you to go and take, uh, take a look because it will be really, really interesting. And then we will have uh, our first webinar run by Alejandro on uh, an introduction to generic programming in Haskell. This is uh, really interesting. So I also really recommend it if you attend. So this is all for today. Thanks for attending this talk at 47 Degrees Academy. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next uh, events. Bye bye.